think if you finish the blockchain academy you have knowledge that at the moment less than 10 maybe 5000 people know yeah which is which is sick yeah and like we all believe that this is going to be the new internet like imagine yeah Hello, I'm Dan. Um, I'm an alumni from the first Polkadot Blockchain Academy. I'm now a support engineer uh, within Parity. And yeah, nice to meet you. And I'm Sasha. I am, I am a developer advocate at Parity. I work on developer relations. And I was a teaching assistant at the very first Blockchain Academy. Um, Super stoked to be interviewing Dan here and, and to learn about his experience, to also learn about what got him to Web3 and what got him into learning about Polkadot. Uh, so let's do it. Hey, Dan, how's it going? Uh, you want to tell us a little bit about your journey into Web3? <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, journey into Web3. Um, so I think like most of the people, I'm calling the term rabbit hole. Um, I've seen it in, I don't know, people call it all the time, but yeah, that was similar to me. I was just reading about blockchain, uh, got this idea of, wow, they're building this new internet thing, uh, this internet currency, and yeah, got really excited and uh, dove into, uh, into blockchain. So Dan, you have a particularly interesting story, I think, because you actually started uh, um, delving into programming from having done a degree in mechanical engineering. And then that kind of uh, kick-started your interest into discovering about these technologies. Can you tell us a little bit about how you got from, you know, doing whatever it is you did at university to now working at Parity? I did industrial engineering and management as a bachelor. Then I was looking for a master degree didn't like the ones that I could do. Um, then I came across this programming school, which is from the 42 network. Um, yeah, did that for a year. And this at the same time that I started with that, I also found out about blockchain. So it kind of went hand in hand. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, during uh, the end of that curriculum, I came across the blockchain academy. Polkadot Blockchain Academy, and yeah, got a, applied, selected, and got a job uh, offer from Parity. So, uh, what what made you curious about Polkadot, and specifically? I think I remember talking to you like outside of this interview, and and you actually were looking at other uh, protocols. You were looking at Ethereum, Cosmos, and other places. And um, I think you have a particularly interesting story about you going from okay. I know how to code and I want to apply it somewhere to, okay, where should I go? Where, where's a really interesting space for me to be applying these skills? Yeah, so like delving into blockchain just started for me like investment wise, you know, like uh, all these NFT craze and all, the, all that kind of stuff. Um, and really going deep into all that technology without any guidance or whatever is pretty hard. So I didn't have like an opinion like, hey, Polkadot is the best. I did have like a, a, a nice feeling. Everything made sense a lot to me. Um, but I just signed up to all the, what is it? The major blockchains, Ethereum, Cardano, Polkadot, whatever. Um, so yeah, signed up for all those newsletters. Or no, I signed up for all the newsletters. And a fun story, I was then in Norway with my friends camping. And um, I made a deal with myself to go on my phone one time, and that was to check my email for the, my, my rental agreement, whether that could be uh, extended for a year. Didn't find any, what is it, uh, rental uh, email stuff. Um, but what I did find in my spam was the Polkadot Blockchain Academy email, like, hey, we're going to do this, the first one, uh, apply, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, <laughs> yeah, and basically send myself a screenshot. And when I got back home from this trip uh, in, from Norway, I made a resume, made a LinkedIn profile, did everything, and somehow got selected. Yeah, um, yeah. That's that's that's. Awesome. And that's and that's and that basically started my whole journey with okay, 
learn about blockchain and of course mainly Polkadot because of the whole Polkadot Blockchain Academy. But yeah, it was uh that was very helpful as well. Yeah. I, so I remember you as a student, like constantly curious about what you're learning, right? The things that you learn at the Polkadot Blockchain Academy go from the very fundamental blockchain, architecture, economics, uh, cryptography, to then slowly immersing yourself into what, what Polkadot is about and how Polkadot is, is built. Um, but in those few uh, early courses, I remember you asking, like, you, you were very inquisitive. And I think that's, that's a very interesting uh, experience to have had because you were kind of coming in with a blank slate. Like you mm. didn't know that much about, you know. I had I had troubles with the term API. Right. Literally. Yeah. <laughs> I like was like, like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> decentralized state machine and all that stuff. I mean, like, what we cover is, is we, we go in a lot of depth at the academy. But here's my question to you. What would you recommend for someone who's learning about this stuff? Uh, uh, what would you recommend someone learning or curious to learn about blockchain technology to, to to start with like where do you start where did you start i think it begins with understanding bitcoin because it's just such a simple example um that's what i what what i yeah that's the first moment that i was like okay now i understand something now i understand an example of this blockchain technology and bitcoin is basically balance transfers you know that's mm -hmm. it um and understanding why you can't change the state why you can't go back in time and i don't know uh, make those modifications uh, how these hashes are therefore used and if something is changed like that that would result in all these different block hashes etc 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 um so yeah i would start just yeah yeah bitcoin it's a simple simple example and um Understanding a, a core use case like Bitcoin is, is yeah, helpful. It's, it's, yeah, it's because it's so 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 easy or so much easier than I don't know, like Ethereum or Polkadot right now. What 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 general advice would you give to someone who's interested in uh, becoming a blockchain developer? Um, I think it would help to, and that must be hard but like choose one blockchain and go through their documentation and tutorials because they all do things differently. Uh, they use different codes or what is it? Uh, software languages. So um, yeah, I think that's the easiest or I think that's the most uh, effective way to do it. And then just, yeah, like learn by doing it, learn by writing a smart contract um, or with Polkadot, write a pellet or whatever. Yeah. Um, but it, I think if you go through multiple blockchains, then it becomes confusing. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I think that that would be the best advice I can give. Yeah. So another question that's similar is, what would you advise someone who is already maybe a developer interested in working in the Polkadot ecosystem? In the Polkadot ecosystem. Um, yeah, so six months ago, I would say, okay, start building a pallet, you know, do the kiddies tutorial or, and, and, and run your new blockchain with your own custom pallet mm -hmm. and, you know, play around mm -hmm. with it. Now I would say start with ink because okay. it's, it's easier, I think. It's also like the feedback loop is, is shorter. So it's, yeah, like the whole trade jungle frame is not really present there uh, right. behind the scenes. But um, so, right. yeah, start with ink, get familiar with smart contracts, and then try to understand the bridge to a palette. So, w what is the difference? You know, what is the difference within the whole architecture of? of a blockchain, of a, of a substrate blockchain. Yeah. Um, and yeah, go, th yeah, find your way through all the, yeah, get familiar with, and uh, get familiar with Rust, of course. Mm -hmm. um, and just, yeah, practice, mm -hmm. practice and do it, learn by doing it.
that learn by doing is definitely the best way to thrive as a developer in this in, in, in anywhere, anywhere really. Anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> but so just I wanted to also get your insight on like what are the current opportunities if you were interested to be working in this ecosystem. Um, we have like we have like core blockchain engineering. We have protocol engineering. You know, we have like a lot of different layers of like you know, a frame developer. Um, yeah. So what what opportunities? The easiest you separation I, you could make in within parity is a core engineer, maybe an application engineer. Um, so where within the core engineering teams, you are literally working on substrate frame. Ink, mm -hmm. polka dot the protocol, hard cool shit. Yeah. Um, but if you are also more interested in like using ink, frame, substrate, and building, I don't know, your own idea or an idea for someone else, then you are more like an application engineer, you could say. Um, So Dan, tell me, what is, what is it you actually do at Parity? Um, I'm a support engineer in the delivery services. So as a support engineer, I see it as an engineer in the making, but we are just learning constantly about everything there is within Parity Tech. And um, at the same time, like providing support to either the community, so developers through yeah. Substrate Stack Exchange, um, and we're also sometimes helping uh, teams directly, or providing support to conferences. Where yeah, we're like uh, we know we have a very eventually we have a quite wide spectrum of things that we understand and know. Um, so yeah, awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Can you tell me a few of the projects that you've been involved with in your role as support engineering? So a few things that I've done is within the delivery services, we have task forces to have our team like up to date with the newest tech. So for example, six months ago, we initiated the Bridges task force and the Light Client task force. Um, I was in the Light Client task force and we basically del do dove into Smalldot. Okay. Smalldot is a Light Client implementation in the Polkadot ecosystem. And um, yeah, I, I went through the codes for th two months and wrote a knowledge base. Um, now in a month, I'll, we'll probably do like a presentation on Polkadot Decoded about it. So that's cool. I was a, I was active on Stack Exchange a lot, Substrate Stack Exchange. Yeah. Um, I provided support to, or I provide support to a parachain called Frequency. They're like trying to do the decentralized social media base layer, which is, it's really cool. And went to East Denver, provided technical support there. And now I'm for the first time starting to build a, or I'm building a parachain implementation kind of thing, which is uh, super fun. Awesome. That's yeah. really cool. Can you tell me about what you're most excited on working on in the, in the next six months? Probably this, this project that I'm building for, uh, for, I don't know, outside team. To be building a power chain. Yes. Just yeah, coding, getting better with Rust, getting better with Substrate, getting yeah. better with Frame, everything. That is something I'm looking forward to. And well, this presentation is going to be cool as well, quite exciting and like scary as well. Yeah, but, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. But I think that's like, I don't know, like within parody, they just put you on stage. Like you have been on stage like many times. Yeah. I know some guys from the academy that I was with either have done already a presentation or are now teaching at the academy, you know? Mm -hmm. So yeah, like if you want, you can really just, uh, yeah, get into those uncomfortable, but very like uh, interesting. Uh, it's super valuable. Yeah, exactly, I mean, exactly. I mean, like I think in the work you do, what's awesome is that you're you're able to constantly learn mm -hmm. and share what you're learning with other people. You know, these technologies are very complex. Like we are also discovering interesting things that can be done still with Substrate. We're also discovering ways 
uh, or best practices, right, around, for example, like off-chain workers was something from mm -hmm. someone in the delivery services team who said, like, we need to tell the community that there are safe ways and unsafe ways to, to do auction workers. And you as an engineer have that uh, luxury to, to, to be experimenting with things and then giving talks about it and stuff. And I think yeah. that's awesome. Like in my work, that's s very similar stuff. Uh, but you guys are, are really going deep into the technology and then providing resources around that. Yeah. Now we're building a lot as well, which is um, where, yeah, like at the end of the day, like the, the engineers within the delivery service are also engineers. Um, yeah. And um, I think with time, we will only become more valuable um, because eventually, like, we need stuff to be built with all this, mm -hmm. uh, with all this technology. So, yeah, it's um, it's a cool place to be. Can you tell us what you're going to be presenting at Decoded? Um, the presentation is about small dot in mobile apps. So we integrated small dot through Flutter, uh, which is a framework for apps. And we are now able to like boot up a live client in our phone and sync with Polkadot, Kusama, That's the awesome. parachains, etc. And yeah, we're trying to like send a transaction maybe or whatever, but like the goal is just to not only for developers, but I think in more broader terms, have people understand what this allows because we were we were, we're going to a world where we're using apps and that we verify everything that we like see or obtain from yeah. you know the blockchain which is like it's a game changer yeah it's really yeah. fucking cool yeah definitely. um and like i hope that i can like try to like level that down to really simple terms so that i can also show it to my friends and they're like whoa yeah. because right now it's like man what the what the hell are you yeah. talking about? <laughs> right, yeah. I mean, the technology we work on is... is it's is, amazing. It's amazing. It's it's very much still uh, uh, not very accessible, right? And so what we want to do as engineers uh, and educators in the space is also to, to make it more accessible, to, to, to bring it to more mainstream. So what was the best part of the Polkadot Blockchain Academy for you? I think the craziness of everything like I was surrounded there by like very intelligent people that knew a lot already had like I don't know accomplished already like a lot of things and um, but like we were all there for the same thing was just like learning this this really cool stuff mm -hmm. so and it was for everything for everyone it was very challenging um so i think just like the hard work the collaboration and also a bit of the like fanciness of you know having all these people that you would normally see on youtube see on stage and like yeah. actually explaining you stuff um yeah that was really cool yeah yeah so what would you recommend for potentially a student interested in joining the academy uh how could they be best prepared for that kind of experience? So I sometimes hear people like complain about that it is that is like too much or the curriculum is too intense uh, intense. But literally, like you're like this is an opportunity of a lifetime. Or that's how I saw it, and it's just one month. Like just make sure that you eat healthy, sleep enough, drink enough water. And just work your ass off. Like, you're not going to die from that. Right. You know? <laughs> so just get into that. Like, don't be, uh, I don't know. But, like, be very grateful. Like, you're, you'll are you be explained about this this tech by the actual creators of it. Like, that's a, that's a gift. So take it with both hands and just uh, nail it, I would yeah. say. Yeah. Can you comment on like how the student experience was for you? We were real students, like we were in a you know lecture hall and we were getting lectured and we had to ask questions, ask questions, but yeah, that's straightforward, but do it. Like, I think like it's hard for people to actually raise their hand and ask the question because they feel dumb or whatever, mm -hmm. but 
at the end of the day, like you, uh, it's how you learn. It's um, it it like if you are the one who asked the first question, other people will do it. Like the ice has just to be uh, just has to be broken. Right. And I I think also if many people are uh, asking questions and you're still the one like behind. You just have to do it once and then you get more confident with it. And, you know, it's so asking questions other than that. Um, yeah, you had to do homework. You know, like we had extra assignments. We had like actual, how do you call them? Like the tests, the, right. the graded assignments. Yeah, there were some graded assignments. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it was a real like mini master's program. Um, and they take it really serious. So, mm. yeah, it's a, I w it's a proper student experience, yeah. Yeah, uh, definitely. So what happened after the academy for you? I so got a job offer from Parity, which was insane. And um, I... So that whole summer was such a roller coaster, like trying to find a way into blockchain to having a job at my favorite blockchain sort of sort of speak and i like started the whole programming i already f felt like okay i want to go away and just like really dive into something and uh, i don't know make some progress so i was immediately okay i'll move from holland and just like fully uh what is it? Uh, put all my energy. Yeah, put all my energy in this, in this, in learning and uh, working for Parity. So I moved to Berlin. Where's the main office? Where are we are right now? Wait. So to get this straight, you finished the academy in August, I think it was. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. August. Yeah. You got a job offer from Parity. Yeah. Working on the delivery services team. Yes. Probably like mid August or whatever. Yeah, two and then two months ago, so I had two weeks of uh, what is it holiday. I went surfing and then I moved to Berlin, and then everything started here. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So Dan, what are your plans for the future? Still learning. Um, there's still a lot to learn. I need to get better in programming. Um, yeah, like man. In the time that I've been here, like I've learned, oh, like the protocol, frame, substrate. But during that time, XCM came, and like now asynchronous backing. So like the protocol keeps evolving, substrate keeps evolving. So it's like you never stop learning, or you never have to stop learning, which is perfect, um, but also challenging, especially with Berlin summer summer now around. <laughs> um, but um, no, keep learning and yeah, who knows? Um, I think what attracted the, the blockchain uh, world like at the start as well was like I always had the uh, like motivation or dream to like start my own company and seeing this new internet being built, I just thought like, okay, if I know this, which other people won't in the start, then I can build a company on it because it's so new and it's gonna be amazing. Yeah. So, but that's future stuff. I, I, I really like it at Parity. Um, so, I don't know, yeah. I'll, yeah, we'll let, let time tell. Yeah, that's, <laughs> I think that's a great response. I mean, yeah, like being, working on technology that is very cutting edge. Like what we're doing at Parity is very cutting edge. It's crazy. Even within within the Web3 ecosystem, you know, the stuff that we do specifically at Parity is, is uh, very sort of um, pushing the boundaries forward. And uh, and it's a great place to be uh, in that sense. Yeah. Um, if Dan, last question here. If you were able to talk to yourself at going into the academy mm -hmm. before, what what sort of like tips would you tell that person uh, and what sort of things to look forward to would you would you tell that person it's it's so simple like life can be so simple it's just focus on something do your best be nice stay humble and then just do it and then you'll meet amazing people 
you'll be lectured by amazing people. Man, the academy is so taken care of, uh, so well taken care of. Like we had like dinner in this Cambridge hall. We were sleeping in a Harry Potter castle and you know, like, so I think if you will, yeah, just go there, enjoy and do your best and yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Well, Dan, thanks so much for taking the time to, to chat about your experience at the Academy and working at Parody. Um, is there any like last things you want to tell people that might be interested in working at Parody or joining the Blockchain Academy? Um, any last words? Um, joining Parody, I think I already answered. Joining the Blockchain Academy, like learn Rust, like just fucking practice Rust for like two, three months or whatever, because it's hard. And like I, I did the Rust exam now, and it's like, it's a lot harder than what it was for me. So, but it's good because you will also gain from it a lot while yeah. uh, at the academy because I was building that DEX and I had no clue what I was actually doing. I was just yeah. putting stuff in there, yeah. making it compile, and then I could could write some logic about you know how I. Uh, do the automa automated market making. Uh, but right. having a palette configured uh, within a runtime and all that kind of stuff, I had no clue. I was just, you know, looking at other palettes nice. and then making it work. So if I had that practice of what the rest Rust exam now, like sort of, I don't know if I can say this, but it like has, then I think the whole academy like will be much more worth it for you especially if you're a more uh, experienced developer because then everything goes i think a, a bit easier but yeah, um definitely but and for and for less skilled developers because that was that's what i was still am just grind just, just grind. grind yeah yeah just grind yeah and i think what's also awesome is these are skills that you you can you can carry with you no matter where you end up, right? No matter where, whether you want to stay in the Web3 world or, or not, or even like, whether you want to work at Parity or not, right? Literally, I think if you finish the Blockchain Academy, you have knowledge that at the moment, less than 10, maybe 5,000 people know. Yeah. Which is, which is sick. Yeah. And like, we all believe that this is going to be the new internet. Like, imagine. Yeah. It's like a movie. <laughs> it's like a movie. <laughs> okay, then. Cheers. Um, thank you so much. Um, and, uh, well, we'll see you around. Okay, go. Okay, three, two, one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Academy questions. Yes. Academy questions. Academy. Okay, so... Um...